39 of 2020 was This Perfect Day by Ira Levin. So I was watching a Netflix series called The Travellers and this book was recommended by one of the characters to another character and they were seen in the series reading it quite a bit and so I thought oh that's a little bit of a of a what do you call them things where there's like little hints was it egg a little a little easter egg is that right some egg you know what I mean um I thought oh I'll uh, I'll get that and read it because if I love the travelers which I do then maybe this book will be quite similar and it actually is and so I was very happy about that it's it's quite immersive so straight away you're kind of in a really disturbing dystopia and it's interesting because it's very subtle in the way that it's disturbing so there's quite a lot of like violation of human rights because in most dystopias where there's kind of a it's basically like a a place that's controlled so like a totalitarian kind of control and well it's more utilitarianism but they're kind of sacrificing their individual rights and freedoms for the, the collective basically and there's a lot of violations of human rights that jar with you because the characters don't respond in the way that you expect like you'd think they'd be like moral upraids or uproar about it but they're just quite apathetic they're not really that bothered it's just normal to them to like behave like that and so they kind of just like go along with it so leaving is kind of exploring this utilitarianism in the sense of like what's best um is it better for the many than the few which is what this kind of dystopia is like structured like it's it's beneficial for for many but there's a few that it's not very good for um i feel like in this one there's things like babies are just killed which reminded me a little bit of um lois lowry's the giver because they do that in there so i'm wondering if she's stolen a lot of ideas from this book because this book was before was before she'd written that um and so it was characteristic of that and it also kind of addresses like the consequential suffocation of individualism and the kind of negatives of individualism because when you're an individual you have to make all your own choices and you have lots of anxiety associated with that lots of emotion associated with that but if someone's kind of like there's like a trade-off isn't there between like being controlled and therefore you're happier but you don't have any freedom or having loads of freedom and being so anxious that you can't make any decisions anywhere it's like what's like the best thing so that's kind of explored obviously these things are just alluded to it's very subtle it's not like explicitly talking about these things which is why i like it because it's a lot a lot between the lines and um there's also the question of this fallacy of gatekeepers so this is like a an ethical question that that gets discussed amongst lots of others that if you if you do have a world where you are controlled by a society or i mean just think of like communism for example there's a question of whether you can trust the gatekeepers so the people that are that are trying to you know for example socialism you know how are you actually going to make socialism work you're going to need people in charge like communism happens in order to kind of enforce the structure but could you trust those people that are in those positions because human beings are corrupted by power and so the gatekeeper argument is that can you trust the people that have got the keys can they be trusted to not be corrupted by power and therefore being you know integral have integrity and not act in their own self-interest but to act in the interest of the many so that's kind of explored and there's a little twist in it that i'm not going to ruin for you because it is very good that explores that in much more detail and is a kind of parallel to modern day politics and structures like that so i'll leave it there but it's very very interesting if you if you draw those comparisons i loved it in terms of the first half of it but the way that the plot advances and i wonder if this is because of the time it was written it's not very kind of exciting it's there's not really much kind of going on 
But I recognise that there are other books, like, for example, The Island, which was a film, but the other book that is kind of based on another film, um, oh, what's it called? The Japanese writer, uh, Never Let Me Go. There's not kind of much going on when they try to kind of, oh, I don't want to spoil it, but but when they try to kind of like escape, um, <laughs> I'd always spoiled it. Uh, it's obviously going to happen. You know, they're in a dystopia. They always try and escape. This is what always happens in all kind of dystopias. I've not really ruined it for you. You should have been expecting that. Come on. And because of that, there's not really that much that's going on because they're in a controlled state. So there's not really much scope to be able to do much, if you will. And so for that reason, it kind of lost me a little bit. And because it was quite similar to a lot of other things that I've read, which have probably stolen it from this. So I respect that this was probably a trailblazer in, in that kind of uh, sense. What I didn't like about this book was that there's an objectification of women. Women are, are seen as um, just objects to have sex with. And I appreciate that it was probably intentional because they have like a setup where you could just have sex with whoever and it's not emotional and it's just to you know meet your physical needs um and they're on kind of medication to dull anything emotional about you anywhere so you're just basically like an animal if you will and it's almost kind of showing that you've got that base nature and you are just kind of having sex because that's what animals do and so when one of the characters rapes the other one you understand it, but it's still quite horrifying and it's in that subtle way where it's a violation of human rights and it's a very weird setup because the character that's been raped thinks that they love each other and it's just very odd, but it's very good because it's dystopic and that's what you would expect. And it's also kind of hinting at the fact that they've been drugged for so long that they can't really return back to humanity and to being human, they're still in that kind of animal kind of mindset. And as I was writing on my board, I did think about the parallels with like the modern dating scene and the fact that there is an objectification now of people, both males and females, because we're almost like drugged and we're not really feeling our emotions as much. And so that explains why we think that it's okay to objectify another person. It just made me think of that as I was kind of writing up on my, on my board. Um, but maybe I'm just seeing a pattern when there isn't one. Um, so because of because of the, the weirdness between, you know, they think they love each other, but they clearly don't. The characterisation feels really hollow. They don't feel like a real person. But I think that that's really good writing and is intentional because the idea is that they're not a real person because they've been drugged and they've not, they don't feel everything because they're numb to reality of the, of the humanity, if you will. So I would definitely recommend it because it's quite reminiscent of classic dystopias. You know, it's very much like Brave New Worlds and 1984 and it's got that, that, that undercurrent of political satire that just makes dystopia really really interesting and really kind of disturbing that this could you know that, that kind of you know if you're in an individualistic culture that idea of violating your human rights and being controlled by an authoritarian state it does jar with you and it does disturb you and then it does ultimately make you feel grateful that you're not in it so i think that um if you like dystopia and you've, I mean, like me, it took me so long to find something as good as the other dystopia that I've read because there's a lot of YA that's dystopia, but it's YA in the sense of there's always like a male and a female that are in love with each other and you want to be sick in a bucket. It's not got that political satire and that undercurrent that modern, uh, not modern, sorry, that um, classic dystopias have, but this one has it. And I think it's because of when it was written. I want to say it was written in the 70s, but... I could just be making that up. Let's just see if it says when it was first published. Watch it be like a new one though. Yeah, it was in the 70s. So I think that um, it was probably like on the back of the old dystopia before the whole YA movement came in and, and ruined dystopia. So yeah, I definitely recommend it. 